Welcome back to the Raiders franchise. It is the trade deadline, and the Raiders are 4-3. and three. Our next game is against the undefeated Kansas City Chiefs. Do we take this chance to try and make a move that makes this team better? We're coming off a disappointing loss last episode, and I really want us to be able to compete this year. Is there a move that makes sense and can help us in the second half? I went through the teams I considered to be sellers and looked for players that I thought made sense. By the way, the Commanders are barely scoring 10 points a game. They have someone I am interested in. But one of the issues is that we don't have a lot of cap space to take on a major salary. So to make something work might take a little creativity. Looking at our roster, I'm not sure there's a glaring need that we have to fill. But could we use a third receiver to put us over the top? I think that's an option. I also think a third corner to really solidify the secondary. There are a lot of ways to try and make this team better, but those to me are maybe the two ways that are the most impactful that won't take away too much playing time from our best young talent. And these trades can get really tricky. I think DJ Reed wouldn't be a bad player for us to look at adding. 84 overall. Good press ability so you can play him anywhere. High awareness, good zone coverage, really good all-around player. Number two caliber corner at 35th in the NFL. But one of the issues is we're already missing a third round pick after that aggressive trade up to go get Leon Hillhouse. So if we give up our two or our four, there's a massive gap in our draft capital for 2027. I do have some interest in maybe acquiring Terry McLaurin, but to even have a chance at seeing what it would take, I'd have to clear cap space ahead of knowing if a trade even works for us. I'm not sure if I'm willing to do what it really takes. I would trade away Michael Mayer and maybe to get somebody I have to give up a player. Mayer doesn't really have interest in re-signing with us at the end of the year, but it's hard to give up one of our more valuable picks plus a starter in this situation. I'm not sure we're in a position where it's easy to look at adding anybody. Ultimately, I'm just not getting close on any of these deals. I've tried acquiring Reek Woolen. I've tried getting Kendall Fuller, DJ Reed, and we're just not getting anywhere unless I give up a much higher pick that I think I'm willing to right now. I wanted to make it work, but I just think the price is way too high, and I need to keep some of these picks. We have an old core. We're not sure about quarterback Denzel Stockton. And why don't we consult today's Stockton meter update? I had some feedback and I've adjusted the scale here to go from three different Raiders quarterbacks. On the low end, you've got Jamarcus Russell, biggest quarterback bust of all time. In the center, Derek Carr, average quarterback, average results that the Raiders wanted to move on from. On the high end, you've got one of their best quarterbacks in franchise history, Kenny Stabler. Right now, I'd say Stockton lands a little bit high in the Derek Carr portion because Stockton's best days, I think, are better than a lot of Carr's best days, but Stockton's worst days are probably lower. But overall, I think Stockton is maybe a slightly better upgrade to Derek Carr. All right, last second revisiting this DJ Reed opportunity. We're getting a little bit closer here. If I'm willing to move the two, maybe in a pick swap. Oh, that hurts, but ultimately we got a deal done here at the last second. I threw in Marcus Blades. I'm trying to give them a valuable return that's worth their while. Blades is a scheme fit. He has a couple years under contract, and I think he's one of the better players I've actually drafted in this series. But we have corner depth, and we're getting a corner, obviously, in DJ Reed. Blades can also step in and play right away for them. He's got normal dev. He might end up being just a decent starter for a few years. But that's good for them to get the two and a player, along with Trey Tucker. And now we get deeper at corner, just throwing more resources at this spot. 
We've taken a little bit of a step back with some of Sneed's regression. And now we get a minor upgrade over Jack Jones, who now becomes somebody that maybe we could look to trade. And actually for Jones, what makes more sense is to trade him to a team that needs a corner and isn't really selling right now. But maybe we can get something from them that helps us. Unfortunately, the teams that need cornerback the most right now don't even have cap space. And I'd rather get a pick in return for Jones than a player, especially if we have to make up a two plus million dollar cap difference here. But we're sending him to Detroit where he can be their number two corner. We're also giving up a future five and getting the Lions fourth round pick. So we're able to repair some of that draft capital. And now we've got a one and three fours, a five and a six. And I wonder if we'll be in a position where we have to get more than that. So now we don't have our future two or three. Questions about our quarterback, an aging roster. It's an interesting spot with this team right now, to say the least. And that's going to be all we do here at the deadline. So I want to add a fifth receiver then to fill in for the Trey Tucker roster spot. And... All right, you got DeAndre Hopkins, Zay Jones, and Hunter Renfro. So we're going to sign the 34-year-old DeAndre Hopkins, who's down to 76 overall. Hopkins has that mentor tag, which will help out all the receivers, but especially Seymour and Clinton. I really did consider trading away Michael Mayer because he doesn't have interest in coming back, but I really could not find a trade partner that would ultimately make sense. Pretty much every team has a solid young tight end and a lot of them have star or better development so i'm not going to force a move there to a team that it doesn't make sense to but i'm looking forward to having dj reed on the team and strengthening an already strong cornerback group just kind of going all in there to hopefully give mahomes a little bit more to deal with and i think i gave the jets uh, a fair deal DJ Reed, by the way, under contract for next year as well. That'll give us some flexibility, depending on what happens then with Snead and all the other free agents that we have. Ooh, Kansas City took that first loss. And now we'll host us as we play a very big Week 9 matchup. Chris Jones is who they're warning us about this week, and we know all about how dominant he can be. We have a young and developing interior... We'll see if they're ready for the challenge. And we're upgrading. Sean Childress again. We'll go with the power. Run block finesse is a little low, but I'm not really concerned about fixing that. I really like where his ratings are. I think he'll be a long-term player for us. And it would be really nice to see Tyree Wilson get it going today and put some pressure on Patrick Mahomes. I don't have to tell y'all it's a big game. And we're under the lights in prime time as well. Coming in four and three. Had a really big letdown last episode. We were kind of surprised by the Seahawks. So now as we strengthen this secondary, we're hoping we can pull off an upset. And we've routinely given the Chiefs a tough time here in the regular season. And we also need to see our quarterback, Denzel Stockton, show he can go battle with the best. I think he had uh, an okay last episode, but now it's a new stage, and we start with Josh Jacobs and a five-yard run. Running with Jacobs again, and coming downhill, the tackle is made, and it's third down. We ultimately don't make a move at receiver. Anthony Clinton continues to play. On third down, caught by Bateman into Chief Territory. A 33-yard connection. New set of downs. Jacobs with room. Up the middle and down to the 23. Always good to get some big gains on the opening drive. We go Jacobs left side. Mayer a block and a 9-yard pickup. Bunched up the receivers on the right side. That's caught for a loss by Bateman. Third down, Jacobs. First down to the 10. Nice to see five carries on the opening drive. Establish the run. 
And now you got to finish the job. Here is a keeper. Stockton flagged down. He takes a shot at the six. And that play is coming back. Holding on Sean Childress. So on first down, we bring out three tight ends and give it to Jacobs. And he takes us back to the 10. Pump from Stockton and wide open. Touchdown, Michael Mayer. And the Raiders strike first on an impressive opening drive. Now how impressive will this defense look with number 23, DJ Reed. Now in completing the secondary. Pass is caught as Creed Humphrey is in some pain and he's going to exit. Toss out to Pacheco and he breaks the tackle of Spillane. And it's a good pickup of 13 on his first carry. Mahomes back to pass and dumps it to the tight end, getting across midfield. Travis Kelsey is no longer here. That is Luke Schoonmaker. Mahomes underneath, and it's Rice for a first down. I have DJ Reed basically being the slot receiver. He is our highest rated option there. Mahomes has time, and oh, they still have Kelsey. I guess he didn't retire. All right, they faked me out, throwing it to the other tight end. Kelsey's still there. Tony Rice, Hardman, Pacheco, all the usual faces here. On second down, knocked away, DJ Reed. I need him to make some more plays so this trade looks good. Third down. That pass is cut by Hardman, but lost some ground coming back for it. And on fourth down, the Chiefs will take off their half a billion dollar quarterback or whatever his contract is. And they'll bring out the kick team, and it is a 7-3 ball game. A run-heavy approach for the Raiders early on. Now Stockton finds Adams at midfield. A 4-4 four for four start. On first down, dumped off to Jacobs, and that goes for nine more. Chiefs send four. Pass cut. That's Clinton. And Stockton's a perfect six for six as he spreads the ball around to all of his pass targets. Four-man rush. And again, caught. First down. Rashad Bateman. This is the start Stockton needed the show. Now Adams' is slot right as we go empty. And the pass intercepted! Intended for Josh Jacobs. And this drive is thrown away. I don't know that this is ever leaving his game. Another really good game down below for Alex Collins as Jalen Johnson busts up that throw. Mahomes with time, lobs it, caught, no, he dropped it. Kelsey had it for a moment. Marcus Epps, playmaker. He's one of those guys where if we didn't watch the games like this, I might have already moved on from him, but I know he gets the job done. Third down, caught, first down, Rasheed Rice. Again to Rice, flagged down. And that's going to be on KC. Play action. Pressure from Crosby. Thrown away by Mahomes. 43 yards passing. Second and 20. Mahomes has Kelsey. And he's close to the first down. Now just need the two, and Mahomes throws one errantly. That doesn't happen often. Drop the interception, but this drive is still going to be over. You know, that's like 99% the way we wanted this game to begin. If only Stockton didn't throw away our last possession. 
so far we've limited the Chiefs passing game. We've still been our explosive selves through the air. But it's a 7-3 game. We're outplaying them more than the scoreboard indicates. And you know the Chiefs are going to get going. The field shortening now as the Chiefs get to our 33. Mahomes fakes it, and it's Kelsey on the short game. Gets them a first down as Mahomes just reaches 100 yards. With this secondary, I'm hoping it takes teams. A lot of plays to get to the end zone. If you can go 10, 11, 12 plays, that's what it's going to take in theory. There's Kelsey for the first down. I've thrown all the resources I can at this secondary. Mahomes, wide open, touchdown, Isaiah Pacheco. And the Chiefs take their first lead of the game. Well, we only scored on that opening drive. Now Stockton lofts it, and it's knocked away from Adams. Can we get things back on track? We're no stranger to games that get off to a fast start. And then a Stockton INT just ruins the rest of the game. To the wide side, Jacobs. Not quite the first down, but close. Third and one, Stockton on the keeper. Got to throw that one out. Chiefs had that covered either way. And they're looking to add even more. Robert Spillane just got tagged with a foul. And that gives the Chiefs the ball at our 26. They hit us with that sneaky Pacheco route last time. Now Mahomes blitzed and sacked by Devin White. Behind the sticks now and dropped by Kelsey. Sneed defending as the defense tries to keep him from getting more than a field goal try here. Looking to get a jam up top against Tony. Mahomes spins in trouble again. Sacked by Milton Williams. And that takes him out of field goal range entirely. They just pinned us at our own four. And with 247 left to go, you want to make sure the Chiefs do not get the ball again. That's an extra possession for Patrick Mahomes. You're basically handing him the game. Incomplete for Devontae Adams. Stockton open seven for seven. Since then, two for six. It all goes downhill when that first interception is thrown. Can take a while to shake it off. Here's second down. Jacobs, what a run! Across the 25, a badly needed 20-plus yard gash. Now some breathing room. Stockton, he's got him! Open is Clinton, he stepped out of bounds! Come on, man! He had nothing but green! He's wide open! And it's not really Stockton's fault. The ball is right where it should be. It's just kind of unfortunate he didn't keep his feet in there at the end. So now two minutes left to go. Jacob's on the screen, getting blocked, set up inside the 20. How about that play? Picture perfect on the screen pass. On second down, wide open, touchdown, Anthony Clinton. And what a first half he's putting together. We stick with him as that third receiver, and so far that decision is being rewarded. I'm not sure why the Chiefs won't cover him either. Like, he's just by himself every time he's targeted. So now a minute to go. Chiefs are going to see if they can get in field goal range. Pacheco on the screen. Stayed on his feet through that first hit. First down. Pressure by Crosby. Pacheco. First down. Might have more catches than rush attempts so far. 35 to play. Sending four. Mahomes feels the rush, and it's incomplete for Hardman. 27 pass attempts to get to 186. That's pretty good pass defense from us. But you have to avoid giving up anything big. 
Time to throw. Kelsey's alone. First down inside the 25. And they call the timeout with four seconds. And they make it a one-point game. Another close one here with us in KC. In the second half, it opens with the Chiefs getting right down the field. Some big throws to Kelsey and then Hardman. Again, the red zone defense will be tested. They're not quite in the red zone yet. Now they are. Pacheco gains seven. We're bringing pressure. That is shy of the sticks. DJ Reed defending. Fourth and one. Mahomes says, you're not taking me out. I don't even know the kicker's name. Fourth down's my time. And who jumped first? All right, maybe now the kicker comes on. Luke Schoonmaker may have just made a very costly mistake. We'll see if this comes back to hurt KC. But in the meantime, they have taken the lead. 26 on a big play to Devontae Adams. And we'll rejoin the Raider offense as they are eyeing the return of that lead. Running with Jacobs. He fights through contact. A gain of six. That is caught, and it's Bateman for the touchdown. A little RPO there to put the Raiders in front. And on that play, the Chiefs lost Chris Jones. And if he can't return, I'm not sure who else they have left to slow down Josh Jacobs or apply that kind of pressure. The 21-16 game. Chiefs take it back as we continue to trade the lead. Will that be the last time it changes hands? Mahomes pressured, and that's caught by Pacheco. Now looking at 250 through the air. Third and three, Mahomes fakes. Caught first down, and it's Rice. A handoff, and this is trouble. Down goes Pacheco. Loss of two there was a lot better than it could have been. Deep drop and cut. A lot of Pacheco in the passing game today. If we're forcing like a lot of check downs, and they're going to throw it to Kelsey regardless, but we're not making it easy to feed these receivers. Third down, cut. Hardman makes a tough play to move the sticks. That's what we want them to do, though. If they're going to make plays, they've got to really be earned. Can they do that three or four times on one drive? It's lobbed out to Kelsey for a short gain as we're going to take this to the fourth and try to protect a five-point advantage. They go Pacheco's way. He cuts past Wilson. And has the first down. Great run. Mahomes again. Pacheco. Another first down. They've gotten him going pretty impressively. That's five catches for 52 and a touchdown. Mahomes. He finds Schoonmaker now. That's nine yards. 300 through the air on 41 attempts. They've definitely picked up the pace in the passing game. They've gotten even better throughout. Pacheco with room. He fights his way down to the one. Over 100 from scrimmage. Will he cap it off now? 41 passes to nine runs. Ridiculous. 10 runs. Touchdown, Isaiah Pacheco. The Chiefs have retaken the lead. And so, what's it going to be here in the fourth for Denzel Stockton? Jacobs will start us off, and we get a short gain on the ground. Need the 35 for a first down. Time to throw. Caught. First down, Devontae Adams. Stockton has three touchdowns on the day. But it takes more than that to win this game. 
We've had a nice balanced approach. I've liked the play calling overall. First down for Bateman, who just can't make the ground. A play fake, and the pressure forces the errant throw. Lucky to avoid the sack there. Suddenly third and 10. Now you need the Chief 46. Chiefs bring the extra man. Caught by Adams. First down, Las Vegas. Four grabs on the day, 82 yards. Almost like you should throw his way a little bit more. Doesn't have to be a desperate spot. Dumped. It's caught by Jacobs, and that's another first down. So into field goal range now, which would be enough to tie the game. On second down, stocked in a little low. Looking over the middle that time. Almost had the tight end, Disley. Again, it's third down. Stocked in off the fake. Eyes downfield, caught by Adams again. We look his way eventually. Another first down. We're about to go inside five minutes. And nobody over Jacobs, and he makes the catch! Touchdown! I couldn't tell if there was a graphic blocking a player because he was uncovered from the snap. I don't know what the alignment was, but they forgot about him. Now, somebody wasn't wide enough here. So we catch a break, and the fourth touchdown pass of Denzel Stockton gives us a 28-24 advantage. You know, if that's it, that's a pretty good effort for Denzel Stockton. Not mistake-free, but it is a strong performance. 28-24. Kelsey makes the grab and turns it upfield for eight. Play action. Pressure on Mahomes, and he throws this one to the Raider bench. Mahomes only needs two and goes straight to Kelsey to get it. Now we go inside four to play. We bring four. Mahomes over the middle. Hardman with the first down grab. So the Chiefs are in a position where they need a touchdown. A field goal does them no good. And we got this secondary upgrade for this moment, right? Pass off the mark. Rice makes the catch. First down, Kansas City. Both teams have really just, you know, done whatever on first and second down, and then they're no nonsense on third and getting easy conversions. Kelsey now gets five, and this just continues the winding of the clock. 13 catches for Travis Kelsey. Probably not his last one. That is broken up. Good coverage by Jalen Johnson and Devin White. Mahomes looking at throwing his 50th pass of the day here. Off the fake. Caught. First down, Hardman. Two minutes left to go. Kelsey moving top of your screen. Time in the pocket. Caught by Hardman. Gain a seven. All these audibles are eating up precious seconds as well. 90 to play. Screen for Pacheco. He's got the first down. Probably be wise to spend a timeout here soon. Mahomes to the outside. Pacheco for five. That's 53 pass attempts now for Mahomes. 109 left to play. A secondary and defense trying to close this game out. Four-man rush. Time and Hardman shy of the sticks. And that will likely bring on... No, no timeout yet. Third and one, down to 40. Mahomes has time and a touchdown! It's Rasheed Rice. Look like he beat Epps in coverage, and that puts KC in front with 36 seconds left to play. 
Just not good enough. I'm not sure how we got one-on-one -on -one there with the safety. We called cover one out of our 4-3. So, yeah, I mean, playing 4-3 against a three wide is one way to get a safety on a receiver. Reed's not even out there when I'd rather have him with this assignment. They just didn't match personnel. So here we go. 34 seconds, three timeouts. You need three to force overtime. Denzel Stockton, the stage is yours. I know everybody's getting ready to fire off their hottest Stockton takes. Well, there's a catch by Clinton. Protected him as well, throwing behind him. That's a strong start. Took four seconds. First down. It's off the mark to the open Adams. Still two timeouts and Adams on the quick hitter. Got to use the timeout there. You don't want to go too short on this next play. You'll have to use a timeout and then be in some trouble. Caught, Bateman. That's the play that worried me. Because now you hurry up. You're forced to save the timeout. Jeez, dude, get the playoff. Four, three, overthrown. 61-yard field goal try from here if you want it. We're passing. Here it is. Game on the line. Win or lose on this play. Three-man rush. Stockton. Lobbing. End zone. Incomplete. And the Kansas City Chiefs have won again. And the Raiders fall to four and four on this season. We were not sellers at the deadline. The exact opposite is we acquired DJ Reed. This game was a big reason why. I wanted more secondary to throw at this offense. It wasn't enough. Stockton played well. Went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mahomes. But ultimately not enough time for that final possession. And now we've really got to go on a tear the rest of the way. Just to be a wild card. I'm not sure what exactly happens this year if the second half doesn't go well. Say we miss the playoffs. What does the future hold then? I still believe this is a playoff team. Way too good to not make it. But we're 4-4, four and four, so... At some point, you've just got to start stacking some wins, and we haven't been able to do that very consistently. So, that hurts our offensive line, this tough loss. Miami's next. And this could be a game where the loser is just kind of, you know, in a really bad spot the rest of the way. And we're only third place in the West right now. We still play the Chargers again at some point. The Chiefs again at some point as well. I'm looking at these next three games as our chance to strengthen our wildcard chances. It's not our toughest opponents. The Dolphins are under 500. The Jets are under 500. The Panthers, they might be a little bit better, but they're not one of the better teams in the league right now. I think we have to win, you know, two of those three and maybe even sweep it, knowing we have some really tough AFC games down the road. That is the game I wanted to focus on today. The deadline, the big Chiefs matchup, and next episode I think we'll open with a couple simulated games and possibly jump into that Jets matchup against George Garrison. But I guess we'll see what the season throws our way. It really could go in any direction from this point at 4-4 four and four entering Week 10. What do you think, everybody? Let me know in the comments section. Where is your confidence right now with this team? Do you think we have what it takes to turn it around? Or are we going to end up one of the most disappointing teams of the season? Thank you all for watching today's episode. I am looking forward to your feedback as always. Please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.